today we're gonna replace this power steering pump. That doesn't sound good. And tomorrow we're gonna replace this suction hose. If you have a leak in the suction hose, either the top or the bottom, you will allow air into your pump and that's no good. If there's a leak in the top right here, then you can allow air to get in and then when you park it overnight, look at it the next day and your reservoir level will be higher than when you left it before. You'll also notice some noise, some air bubbles in the reservoir, possibly some foaming. And if you have foaming fluid overflowing out of your reservoir, you definitely have air in the system. Here's the power steering reservoir. With the engine off, I'm going to turn the steering wheel left to right, lock to lock, and if the level in the reservoir increases, then I know I have air in the system or a vacuum leak. The vacuum leak could come from the suction hose or even the rack seals, because with no air bubbles, when you turn the wheel, fluid comes out of the rack, back to the reservoir, and the rack sucks fluid from the pump, which sucks fluid from the reservoir. So let's turn the wheel. You notice that it takes some time for the fluid to get sucked back in, so don't turn the wheel too fast. It helps to have someone watch the reservoir while you do this. Did you see that level go all the way up? There's definitely air in the system. And that's just from turning the wheel back and forth. With air in the system, when you start the engine, the fluid level in the reservoir drops. But when you turn off the engine, any compressed air remaining in the system expands and pushes fluid back into the reservoir. Got the hose off already. Out of the way over here. Let's take this pressure line off. Let's make a little bit more mess here. Yeah, made a mess. Put that hose out of the way. I can easily grab on to my tensioner pulley. Ugh. Try and minimize the spillage, but pulling this reservoir out, something's gonna come out and make a little bit of a mess. So just Try and pull this hose off of this end here and tilt it. Just try to minimize the mess. Just a little coming out of that hose there. I'm dripping right onto the paper towel. Right, if I can elevate this. Uh, stop dripping. Uh, get up, get up. There we go. Elevate it to there. Try not to dump everything out of this. Uh, there we go. You ever do this? Loosen it up so much you jammed your ratchet in there and you have to switch directions but it's one of those that has the twisty thing on the top and you can't get to it. <laughs> Here we have the new pump and the old pump. We have a tag that says use the original fluid, flush it and bleed it. Let's pull off this protector for the pulley and let's swap the pulley over. What's the torque spec for that? I don't know. Number one. Yeah. There we go. Clicked it. <laughs> yeah, those don't click. New pump. Goes about right there. Held in with two bolts. Bottom one's fun to get to. If you don't like these security foil things on these lids, blame the dude that poisoned the Tylenol bottles in the 80s. It's all his fault. So we get a little bit of fluid, lubricate the O-ring right here. O-ring lubricated, now this pressure hose can go on. Twist it till it falls in place. Check out that shiny new power steering pressure hose and power steering pump. I had to loosen the bolts that hold this whole engine cradle in and lower the back end of this down about an inch to get at the bolts back there to, that hold in the pressure hose and, and to wiggle it in and out of there. It was a pain. We got the new suction hose all ready to go in. It's a match. It's gray. The old one's black. Oh no. We'll get these clamps all ready to go. Let's install the hose onto the reservoir. Put our clamp on it. Right there. Let's 
Let's install this reservoir. First we'll hook up the hose because it's a pain getting it on while it's down there. Almost. Okay, now for the clamp. Wires on backwards. Well, that works. And then this slides onto the holder right here. And this goes under there over to reservoir is in I'm hooking up the hose and it's very important that this hose does not leak otherwise the power steering pump will suck air into it from any leak in this hose and then you get you're gonna get foaming power steering fluid which will expand after it comes out of the rack and back to the reservoir and it'll overflow and cause even more fluid loss Time to fill up the reservoir part way and then do a little bit of vacuum bleeding. Now I'm not going to fill this all the way up because vacuum bleeding might draw more fluid into the reservoir. Important thing is do not vacuum bleed this system while the engine is running because notice that this suction hose is at a lower elevation than the pump from this hose. This hose is higher and there's nothing, when you put this reservoir under vacuum there's nothing to keep the fluid in the intake hose. If you run a vacuum on this reservoir while the engine is running, you will starve the pump of fluid. This fluid will sink right back into the reservoir if you put a vacuum on here. There's nothing else to hold this up. There's the suction on this end, so the gravity will just pull it down. Let's vacuum bleed it and watch the level come up, and then it'll drop back down when we release the vacuum. Okay, now when we pull vacuum on this, we'll get more fluid in here. I need to break vacuum. My uh, suction thingy is sucked in into the reservoir and I need to get it out. Oh, I sucked the, this hose flat. Sometimes things don't go as planned. All right, we'll have to redo this whole thing. The fluid that came into the reservoir isn't the prettiest, so I'm gonna suck that right out of there. When I say isn't the prettiest, I meant it looked a little old. Okay, let's pour some fresh fluid in. A little bit at a time. See the bubbles? Pour some fluid back in. Get some more bubbles. Pour some fluid in. It's going all, almost all the way back down. So I need to add a little bit more fluid. Now let's force some fluid into the system by removing air. And when we take the vacuum off, the air pressure pushes it back in. All right, let's add a little more fluid. And let's get some air out of the system. On this vehicle, the rack and pinion was leaking on both sides, so it wouldn't hold vacuum and air kept getting into the system. Bubble, 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 bubble. bubbles. I'm just filling this reservoir all the way to the top until it starts coming in my hose right there. And then I let it back down. Let's try it again. Now let's see how the engine sounds after the repair. I'd say that sounds much better. 